Okay, this is interesting guys. We don't even have the iPhone 12 yet, and we already have some updates, some leaks on the iPhone 13. So yeah, get us next ready, and here's another Zone of Tech News episode covering the recent iPhone 13 leaks, some Apple Glasses updates, iPhone 12 updates, AirPods Studio headphones, and so, so much more. Actually, no, that's pretty much everything, but yeah, get ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, first of all, I really want to tell you about something very, very cool. So let's say that you guys want long-term storage for backing up your machines, your game progress, and you want that storage to be safe. You want lots of it and you want it to be affordable as well. Well, up until now, cloud storage has been the answer and it still is. But you see, the problem with cloud storage is that the more storage you add, the more expensive it gets. And it gets to the point where it would cost you hundreds of dollars or pounds a month for just a few terabytes. Well, the answer to all of your storage needs is Polar Backup, our sponsor for this video. Polar Backup offers one terabyte of lifetime cloud storage for just $39.99 or £34.99 in the UK, which is cheaper than buying a physical one terabyte hard drive. And keep in mind, this is lifetime, lifetime cloud storage. And they also offer end-to-end 256 -end AES military grade encryption, while also giving you a ton of flexibility. You can use Polar Backup to back up your Mac and PC and customize your accounts by adding additional users, hot storage, and more from just $2.25 a month. And there are many other extra features that Polar Backup offers, such as the ability to schedule your backups when your network is less used, file versioning for keeping multiple versions of projects, as well as file duplication prevention. Try Polar Backup using the link below and get 20% off of the most affordable and flexible cloud storage that you can buy. Okay, so starting off with the iPhone 13, Twitter leaker Fudge at Chocobit, who's been actually pretty accurate in the past, he claims that uh, this is the supposed layout for the iPhone 13, the camera layout, which would be the 2021 iPhone. He did say that we should take this with a grain of salt, since these leaks are pre-EBT. So this could indeed be something that Apple is considering for the iPhone 13 lineup, it's just that it's way too early to know for sure if Apple would indeed go uh, this route. So regardless, this is our very first look into what could materialize into the iPhone 13. And as you can see, the back is quite a bit different now. So we have four camera modules compared to the three modules on the iPhone 11 and also the iPhone 12. Uh, so we are getting an extra module in this array and then the LiDAR sensor from the iPhone 12 that has now been moved underneath that four camera array. I would say that this does make a lot of sense. If Apple were indeed to add another module, uh, they would preferably add it in that triple camera array where that LiDAR module is currently sitting on the iPhone 12s in order to have a consistent design and then that LiDAR module would be moved somewhere outside of that camera array. Now, you're probably wondering, what would that fourth camera be for? Is it a zoom module? Uh, is it one of those strange color filter cameras that OnePlus added? Well, it is way too early to know for sure. But my personal guess is that this fourth module is some sort of periscope telephoto module similar to what Huawei and Samsung have added. Something around maybe a 5x optical zoom module or something along those lines. Now, the problem with a module like that is that you can only go from 1x to 5x. Anything in between would simply be digital zoom. However, if you keep the 2x module and then you also add a 5x module, you will still retain a sharp zoom level in between the two. Which is what I believe Apple would do, at least judging from this design leak right here. Now, speaking of the camera, uh, Fudge also tweeted some details about this new iPhone 13 camera system, and according to him, the iPhone 13's model number is D6X, and when it comes to the actual cameras, the main camera would be a 64 megapixel module, so quite a significant bump from the 12 megapixel module that we have now, uh, and then he also said that it would have 6X digital zoom. Now, the thing is others have really done this in the past. Samsung is a really good example where they added a very high megapixel count to their smartphones and as a result, low light performance was affected negatively quite, quite a lot. Um, 
and they also had focusing issues. So yeah, as long as you have this really tiny smartphone sensor, adding more pixels would just make those pixels smaller as there is a finite room inside the smartphone sensor. And because they're smaller, they would capture less light. This is why Apple is one of the last smartphone manufacturers that kept the now low resolution 12 megapixel sensor because you see the lower the megapixel count is, the bigger the pixels are and the better the camera is in low light. Anyway, so that's the main module. Then we would have a 40 megapixel ultra wide angle module, uh, then a 40 megapixel telephoto module with between 3x and 5x optical zoom, like I was assuming myself, with a 15x to 20x digital zoom. These two are very likely possibilities. Probably not so much in terms of the ultra wide angle module, as it's already pretty bad in low light, and again, an increase in megapixel count would simply make it worse. But you see that telephoto module would benefit a lot from an increased megapixel count. And then finally, the fourth module would actually not be a 2x telephoto module like I believed, but according to Fudge, it would be a 64 megapixel anamorphic lens. So a 2.1 by 1 aspect ratio, which would give you an incredibly wide and cinematic view, especially for when you're shooting video. But is there really any point in having that if we already have an ultra wide angle module? I would say no. And Fudge pretty much agrees. He does say that we should take this with a huge, huge amount of salt. So it's extremely likely that his sources did tell him that these are things that Apple is currently considering doing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they will definitely do those things. At least we cannot know for sure as of now. Also, it seems that John Prosser disagrees. He says that the camera layout of the iPhone 13, iPhone 12s, uh, would be identical to the iPhone 12 to which Love to Dream, another accurate leaker, disagrees. <laughs> very interesting, very, very interesting. Now, from my understanding, both Love to Dream and Fudge, they both get their info from supply chain sources, so the actual manufacturing, whereas John Prosser, he gets his info from Apple's own team. Reason why we have a few conflicts of info here. Aside from that, another change that could be coming to the iPhone 13 is in terms of the notch. So as you probably all know by now, the iPhone 12 from this year will still have the notch. It's just that it will be smaller thanks to the repositioning of the earpiece. Now we've heard some rumors that Apple could be removing the notch from the iPhone 13 entirely in favor of a full screen display. But I don't know, knowing Apple and knowing how they like to keep a certain design for as many years as possible, I don't see them giving up on the iPhone 12's front design after just one single year. That would be cool, but I don't think that's happening, at least not in 2021. But something that is happening in 2021 is the fact that Apple is finally dropping lightning from the iPhone. But unfortunately, we're not getting USB Type-C as you know we've been waiting for so many years now, but instead the iPhone 13 would now have a full wireless charging solution. Yes, this means that we would have no ports at all on the 2021 iPhone. Instead, we would be getting something that looks like a smart connector which would allow you to connect a magnetic charging cable and charge the iPhone like that. So very similar to how the Apple Watch charges. Now, while this is pretty neat, USB Type-C charging would still be preferred. Otherwise, this will still be another extra cable that you will have to carry with you, uh, which is just as inconvenient as it is to carry the Lightning cable now when all of your other devices have USB Type-C ports. So yeah, that really, really sucks again. <laughs> But the thing is, this is looking extremely likely to happen. Fudge reported that this is indeed happening, but that you would be expected to charge the iPhone wirelessly instead. Ming-Chi Kuo has reported the exact same thing, that a high-end 2021 iPhone would be fully wireless, and then John Prosser has also mentioned this as well, that one portless iPhone will be coming next year, and that Apple will never add USB Type-C to their iPhones. And Bloomberg also reported a similar thing, that Apple will be removing the lighting connector from at least one of their iPhones in 2021. Four sources with a very good track record, all reporting the exact same thing. So yeah, it's looking quite likely that at least one of the iPhone 13s would be going full wireless next year. So there we go, this is how the iPhone 13 is shaping up to be. This full wireless iPhone with the same frame as the iPhone 12, possibly the exact same notch as the iPhone 12, as well as some camera improvements, which will be focused on the zoom functionality, which at the moment is severely lacking on any of the iPhones. Now, when it comes to this year's iPhone, the iPhone 12, we do have some fresh updates since our previous Leak Summers episode, which I believe was last week or two weeks ago, but yeah, that one. Now, according to Ming-Chi Kuo, the iPhone 12s 
would not come with headphones inside the box anymore in order for Apple to sell more AirPods. This does make a lot of sense, especially considering the price leaks that John Prosser has posted. So according to John, the 5.4 inch iPhone 12, uh, which would be the lowest end iPhone, that would start from $650. It would come with an OLED display, the new Apple A14 processor, a dual camera module, but still, this is an insanely low price for a brand new iPhone. Then the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Max would cost $750, followed by the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro, which would cost $1,000, and then followed by the iPhone 12 Pro Max, a 6.7 inch monster, and that one would cost $1,100. And aside from the camera modules and the stainless steel build, the regular iPhone 12s would still come with all the features that the Pro models will come with, meaning that there hasn't been a year uh, in Apple's history, I believe, that Apple had a better iPhone lineup. So they obviously had to make some trade-offs in order to keep that price low, and it seems like one of those trade-offs would be not to include any headphones in the box anymore. Unfortunately, one of the other trade-offs would be the lack of any high refresh rate display. Really? Ah, oh, come on, that's disappointing. Yeah, fortunately, yeah. There's been a lot of conflicting reports, by the way, on this. Uh, some saying that it would have a 120Hz display, some saying that it would not. But yeah, long story short, according to display analyst Ross Young, Apple does want to include an LTPO OLED display on the iPhone 12s, so that it can automatically and dynamically adjust the refresh rate from 1Hz all the way up to 120Hz, just like they're doing it on the iPad Pro, but keep in mind that the iPad Pro has an LCD display, and this has to be an OLED. Samsung does have 120Hz displays for smartphones, but you see that refresh rate is fixed. So this is what Samsung has been using on their own S20 line, and while those displays are really, really good, the battery life on those just isn't that great, at least not on the Exynos models of the Galaxy S20s. Now, Samsung will indeed have a 120Hz LTPO OLED panel this year, but according to Ross, they are reserving it for the Galaxy Note 20 and the Galaxy Fold 2. Apple will only be allowed to use it next year in 2021, meaning that this year they will have to choose between a great battery life and a constant 120Hz display. And it seems like they're not choosing the 120Hz display at all this year. And yeah, there we go, this is pretty much everything new when it comes to the iPhone 12. Next up, I have some quick updates on the next-gen AirPods. So John Prosser mentioned back in May that Apple will be releasing some new over-the-head headphones just like the Beat Solos or the Beat Studios are. However, rather than calling these the new Beat Studio, they will be marketed as AirPods, which means that now we would have three variants, three versions of the AirPods, the entry-level model, the AirPods Pro, and then this new AirPods Studio, which according to John, they're codenamed B515 and they will start at $350. Mark Gurman from Bloomberg released this massive report with a ton of inside details on the new AirPods Studio. And according to Mark, Apple is actually working on two AirPods Studio models, a premium version with leather-like fabrics and then a fitness-focused model that uses lighter, breathable materials. The headband is said to be very thin with full metal arms. Not only that, but Mark says that the earpads would be magnetic and that you would be able to replace them individually with different designs and fabrics and materials and so on whenever you wish. And not only that, but this design would allow you to go from fitness mode to pro mode, so to say, whenever you want. Now, I'm not sure to what extent uh, these ear cups would be modular to, since, you know, they have a lot of tech inside, uh, and you just cannot just buy more of these because it would end up being really, really expensive. So I think uh, Mark is just literally referring to the material surrounding it, which would be modular, magnetic, and replaceable, and not the whole uh, ear cup. This is how we model our concept, and we actually base this off of the leaked iOS 14 icon. So we've made these gigantic ear cups held in place by this fairly thin headband. Uh, we do have invisible touch controls on the sides, which would allow you to just adjust the volume, skip to the next song, skip to the previous song, as well as, of course, invoke Siri, uh, which you can also invoke by saying the magic keyword command, which I'm not gonna say because I'm gonna activate your devices, but you know which one it is. Now, at this price point of $350, 
Apple seems to be competing directly with Sony, Microsoft and Bose against their line of high-end noise-canceling headphones. Sony is currently the king in this department with their brand new, well, not so new anymore, uh, the WH-1000XM3s and I'm really curious to see if Apple can actually beat Sony in terms of the sound quality and of course in terms of the noise-canceling as well. Personally, I'm not really into over-the-head headphones. I always find them to be way too big. Um, I mean, they're perfect on a plane, you know, for noise cancelling, but aside from that, I would never, never use them. I always prefer in-ear headphones, like the AirPods Pros are. Uh, so do let me know in the comment section down below which team are you guys in. Team over-the-head headphones or team in-ear headphones. And finally, just some quick updates on the Apple AR glasses. So in our previous video, I talked about those massive leaks from John Prosser. John Prosser also said that Apple is working on a circular version of these glasses, which would be called the Steve Jobs Heritage Edition, and they would be more premium and likely even more expensive than the usual model. However, Mark Gurman called all of this and all the leaks that John Prosser covered in terms of the Apple glasses as complete fiction. Now, Mark Gurman said that there are two devices in the works right now, we're in just one, and two is what I personally heard as well. One device is the mixed AR and VR headset similar to the Oculus Quest. So this is called the N301, according to Mark Gurman, and it would be announced as early as 2021, matching John's report and then released in 2022. The other model would be those pure AR glasses, the N421, which would not launch until the end of 2022 or even 2023. Now, we have seen a ton of Apple patents on both of these designs, really. But most of these patents actually seem to show the Oculus Quest-style headset rather than the true AR glasses design that we're all looking really, really, really forward to. Now, my guess is that it's pretty much in between. So the AR slash VR headset would launch in late 2021, like John reported, and then the actual AR only glasses would launch in 2022, as those ones would require a few more tweaks, especially considering that insane high resolution display that we would get in each eye, which by the way, it would be an 8K display in each eye, at least if we're going by CNET's 2018 report on this, they were the first ones to report on the glasses. So yeah, there we go. We still have quite some time until any of these come out. So uh, let me know which one of these products are you excited for the most iPhone 13, iPhone 12, AirPods Studio, or the Apple Glass. The AirPods Studio should come out this month, actually, in June, uh, announced at WWDC. But yeah, thank you for watching. Definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about each of these products individually. Join the zone if you want to support the channel by tapping on the join button right there, and you also get some really cool perks in return. And this is pretty much, well, pretty much it. So thank you for watching. This has been Zone of Tech. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers.